Hi everyone, welcome to another Cortex tutorial video. Today, I'm glad to announce that our latest firmware release, version 2.3, introduces two frequently requested features. Multiple point trajectories that do not stop at each point, as well as Modbus support. In this video, I will introduce you to Angular and Cartesian waypoints, the two new structures used for new standard actions that will allow you to elaborate more complex trajectories and perform them faster than with our original sequences. Without further ado, let's jump in two of the new examples available on our GitHub repository's master branch. In this example, we will create a list of Angular waypoints by defining a list of joint positions that we want to reach with the robots, as well as a list of duration for each of the motion to reach each of those positions. Then, the robot will interpolate between these points using splines in order to perform a smooth trajectory. Diving into the actual code, we'll see that most of the structure here we're already very familiar with. So first, we have the listener by promise and listener by reference, as usual, to uh, subscribe to the action notification topic. Then we have the core of our example that I will come back to later. Then we have the usual script to move to home position. And as you can see here in our main script, the initialization of the robot is exactly the same. So moving on to the core of our example here, the first part you see there is to identify which model of your robot you're using. This way, later in the example, we're able to load a trajectory that we know will be valid for your robot. Then as usual here, we're simply initializing the robot to single servoing mode. And this is where the new material starts. So. The new waypoint actions work using waypoint lists, which will be, uh, as the name suggests, a list of waypoint that we will want to reach. So first, this creates an empty list that we will want to build on. Then here, according to the model of the robot that we identified earlier, this just lists a list of waypoint that we'll create for our trajectory. Since my robot here is a seven degree of freedom gen three, we will be using this trajectory. Then we're building our waypoint list using this for loop here. So we're using the waypoint list and then the function add waypoints to add way empty waypoints to our list. And then each waypoint can have a, a type either Angular or Cartesian. A waypoint list cannot have both types. So if you try to mix them, uh, you will receive an error from the robot. But uh, for this example, we build a list of Angular waypoints. So what we can do is we create an empty waypoint and select the type of waypoint to be an Angular waypoint. And then all we have to do is inside that Angular waypoint, we can just set the angles to the positions that we uh, identified earlier here for each of the points of the trajectory. In addition to this, uh, with each posi position, we want to set a duration that will uh, tell the robot how long to take to reach each of those positions. You see here that we have a different value for the duration for joint four and six, but that's because uh, the joint five and seven, uh, these are indexes. Uh, in C++, the indexes start at zero, but assuming you start counting the actuators at one, these correspond. So the joints and motors uh, five and seven are slower, so they need a little bit more time. So we add some more time here. So once we've built our entire list, we can set up here to subscribe to action notifications because executing a waypoint list is a standard action. It means that if you subscribe to notifications, you will know when your action is started, when it's paused, interrupted because of errors, or, and when it's finished. And then the core of our example is actually just here. This is the usual uh, on error callback that we have in every single example. So the only part that we're interested in is here where we're validating the waypoint list before we're launching it. So we're using validate waypoint from the base service. And this will just return to us whether or not our list of waypoints is validated within the limits of the robot. Since we've used this list here, I know for a fact that our list will be valid. And then it checks if the list is valid. And if it is, 
we're simply using execute waypoint trajectory, or you can use execute action and build your list of waypoint as an action with an extra layer there to be able to run. This here, as usual, is the same error callback as earlier. It's just good for monitoring. And then here, we're simply closing the same way we were doing in the high-level movement examples. OK, so I've just built the example off camera. So now let us see how it goes. So first, the arm is moving to the on position. And then we have a trajectory of seven waypoints here. The robot is first proceeding to the validation, and now it starts moving. So as you can see, the trajectory of the robot is meant to be really slow here. Uh, that's for safety reasons. As you can see, even in my office here, it, it's, it gets really close to my computer and my face. So for safety reasons, make sure that if you run this example, uh, always use the slower velocities first before moving on to higher velocities or your own trajectories. Also, as you can see, the motion there is completely continuous. Although the robot is slowing down a lot, that's just because it's linking between two different uh, positions that don't need to be reached in uh, with a high velocity in order to respect the requested duration. I believe we're almost done. As you can see, uh, we started the motion here, and we received the action end notification. And that's all for this example. Now, moving on to Cartesian waypoints. This time, instead of creating a sequence of points that we want to reach exactly, in the case of Cartesian waypoints, what we want to do is to create a list of Cartesian poses that we want to move towards, to go in the general direction of for the robot. And we'll add to that a uh, number that we'll define as the blending radius, which will tell the robot how close from our waypoint do you, we want the robot to smoothly transition to moving towards the following waypoint in the trajectory. So as you can see in this example, most of the structure is still the same. We still have the listener. We still have the example to move to home position. And the initialization of the robot is always still the same. So again, the bulk of the example here is this example trajectory function. What you see over there is a function that I'll, I'll go over in just a few minutes. And those definitions here are just quality of life for us so that we can define a Cartesian pose with both positions and orientations as simple vectors of float. So the first part of the example here is, again, to identify which model of robot we're using. So Again, I still have my Gen 3 with 7 degrees of freedom. This will load an appropriate trajectory. Then we still initialize a robot to single level servoing. Again, we create an empty waypoint list. And we will want to set the duration to zero to go as fast as possible. Then uh, Cartesian waypoints have this new feature that you can use optimal blending. I'll go over what optimal blending does. Uh, once we're done with the bulk of the example. The idea behind building the waypoint list here for Cartesian waypoints is exactly the same as it was for Angular waypoints, except now we have to use the Cartesian waypoints type for the waypoints in our lists. So we take our empty list, and we can create new waypoints. We then identify those new waypoints as Cartesian waypoints. And then here, this is where we use the function that was uh, defined above. So let's go see what's in there. So this function is simply used to, as its name suggests, populate the Cartesian coordinates of our waypoint. So this way, we can use the vector of floats that we had inside the, the definition of our trajectory here. 
and use that to fill in all the elements of our Cartesian waypoint. So you can set the position using set X, set Y, set Z, exactly the same way you used to set a mutable pose when you were doing reach pose trajectories. The one new part here is we're adding this new set blending radius uh, value uh, to define our waypoint entirely. And we can also set the reference frame uh, depending if we want to uh, create our waypoint sequence, this particular waypoints relative to the base of the robot or the end effector. So for all of our waypoints that we're creating, we're simply using this function here to facilitate the population of all the elements of the structure. So we do that over and over again for all the waypoints on our lists, and we end up with a full list of waypoints that we want to reach. Then, as usual, uh, as was the case previously, we can validate our waypoint list. This uh, will have the robot check if all the limits of the robot uh, position, velocity, and acceleration are respected in order to be able to perform the trajectory you're asking for. And then we can use execute waypoint trajectory here, or as I said, uh, with the angular waypoint. Since it's a standard action, you can build this into an action and use execute action as well in order to be able to run your sequence of waypoints. So here we have the error callback. This is unsubscribing from the action notifications. All the things we've already seen from the Angular waypoints we see here again. The one part that's new is here regarding the use of the optimal blending. So if you set this parameter to true, then the robot uh, will figure out by itself what are the optimal blending radius to use for each of your waypoints in order to minimize the time required to perform your trajectory based on the acceleration limits and velocity limits of the robot. So all you have to do is take your list, set this to true, and then you can still use execute waypoint trajectory or the execute action function. And that's it. That's all there is to know with waypoints. Let me build this again off camera, and we'll see how it behaves in a minute. OK, I'm back, so let's see how it goes. So first, the robot would go home, but it's already there. So now it's launching the seven Cartesian waypoints trajectory. And you can notice here that the transition between each of the waypoints is made very, very smooth because of the blending that we added to our trajectory. And at no point there does the robot completely stop its motion. I believe we're moving to one last waypoint here and we'll be done. That's right, we can see our notification here. And now we're resuming with the exact same trajectory, this time with optimal blending. So if you run this trajectory at home, it might be difficult to tell from my camera here. But if you run it at home, you will notice that the trajectory is not perfectly the same as what it was previously. And the reason there is simply that we're not using the exact same blending radii that we were uh, in the previous example. And that's it. That's all there is to know about Cartesian waypoints. That's all for today's video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be notified when we release the tutorial video for our Modbus slave interface, the other new feature available with release 2.3, as well as more Canova content. Thank you for watching.